What's up, Raging Nation? My name is Alex, and you're watching the Raging Ruin Review. And in this video, I'm going to review Battleship. Battleship is a movie directed by Peter Berg. And when I first heard about this movie, I was pretty excited just because I'm a big fan of Peter Berg. I really, really, really enjoyed The Kingdom. I, I, I like the rundown, and I enjoyed the first half of Hancock. It kind of went downhill afterwards, but uh, that's okay just because I like Peter Berg's visual style. So when I first heard that he was going to direct this one, I was uh, got pretty excited just because this is his first big, 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 super big, you know, action spectacle, summer big blockbuster, big budget, $200 million movie, right? And uh, the strange thing is that uh, it's based off a board game that doesn't have aliens in it. And this movie has aliens in it. And apparently, I guess the way to make a movie more marketable is you put aliens in your movie, even though it's not even supposed to have aliens in it. When they marketed this movie in the trailers, they said from Hasbro, the company that brought you Transformers. So obviously they're they're trying to bring in the same crowd that likes Transformers, right? Because when you watch the trailers, it does look like Transformers, Transformers at sea rather. But anyways, uh, so I watched this movie and it's really just an alien invasion movie and nothing more than that. And you're really just watching it for the action and it's just a CG action fest, that's it because the story is really weak. Let me tell you that I had a lot of low expectations for this movie. The, the movie only has 36% of Rotten Tomatoes. The reviews keep on talking about how the characters and the weak plot is, you know, that's what make the movie suck, which is totally true. The story is weak. And it's not so much about the alien invasion story that makes it weak. I like an alien invasion movie. That's what I wanna see. But what made it weak is the relationships between the characters. It's about Taylor Kitsch's character, Hopper, who wants to get with Brooklyn Decker, but Brooklyn Decker's father is the Admiral or something like that, who's played by Liam Neeson, and, and we know where this is going. He needs his approval, but he's totally reckless, and then all his, uh, his, his naval buddies go down, so we have this reckless character who needs to lead and be responsible for all these other sailors. And this is something that we've, this situation we've seen many times. It's just that they decided to put it on a backdrop of an alien invasion, okay? Which is kind of unique, but it still doesn't do anything for me. I really just didn't care for any of the relationships. I think a, a huge part of that has to do with the casting too, because I don't think Taylor Kitsch is that great of an actor, nor is he, he like, he doesn't have that charisma, that star, quality, that leading man quality. So I think it was a little bit miscasted. No, in fact, I think it was really miscasted. Why did they cast Liam Neeson? He's a complete badass in other movies, but he's completely wasted in this movie. Why did they cast Rihanna? Casting Rihanna was a very Michael Bay thing to do because like Michael Bay just casts a lot of uh, actors because he says, oh, she looks good or I want her in this movie, put her in here. And Peter Berg did that just because he felt that he just wanted Rihanna in this movie. It wasn't anything more than that. Brooklyn Decker was just eye candy, nothing more than that. One character I thought that was very believable was the character of Stone, which is his brother. He was good. Uh, and I liked the character or the actor who played the big Hawaiian guy with no legs. Now that was an interesting character. That had a very, very interesting, uh, uh, um, uh, or engaging rather, subplot. That subplot was engaging because of that character and the development he goes through. But the rest of it, didn't care for. Weak human uh, story, a story full of plot holes even. <laughs> they had plot holes. Like there was a scene where the alien goes like this, okay, to Taylor Kitsch, and then he reads his mind or something like that. There's a flashback scene, but it's never talked about later on. I thought that was interesting. It, there was potential there, but what does it really mean? Nothing, because <laughs> they didn't explore upon that. Another thing is that, why do the, the aliens kind of act like predators where they only, they only uh, fight or attack things that uh, appear harmful to them? Like, if they see you're unarmed, they won't attack you and let you go. But, like, what are they, predators? What is it, thrill of the hunt? You know, what is it, unfair? I don't know. It's just stupid. Why do they even include that when they don't even explain it? So that was kind of dumb. Unnecessary plot devices. Really, this movie is an action spectacle because don't get me wrong, the story and the, the characters were, were just like weak. The, the, the visual effects are great. I love the action in the movie. The movie is kind of dumb. Uh, just because it really doesn't take itself seriously. But um, the action is great. The initial strike sequence was spectacular. I love that scene, but that was really the best scene in the movie. In the first half of the film, I mean, sorry, the first 30 minutes rather, the first 30 minutes, it just focused too much on the Taylor Kitsch, Brooklyn Deckler relationship. It focuses completely on that. And, and I think the movie forgets that this is an alien invasion movie. Let's let's see what's going on in space. Let's see what's going on with the satellites. They never talk about that except for the very, very beginning, the very beginning scene. That's all they ever talk about, the satellite and how they communicate with the, the outer space and all the, the extraterrestrials. 
But afterwards, it's just all about Brooklyn Deckler uh, and and uh, Taylor Kitsch's characters and, and Liam Neeson. And then I'm just thinking, wow, I don't really care for these relationships at all. I want to know about the space communication stuff, right? Which they don't dwell upon until much later on. And uh, there's just so full of plot holes. I really didn't know what was going on just because uh, they don't talk about uh, a whole lot about why the aliens are there to begin with. <laughs> but... Like I said before, this is a this is a mindless action movie, and there's nothing wrong with that. I was entertained uh, for two hours and twelve minutes. You can make a good alien invasion movie. The Avengers made an alien a good alien invasion movie. Uh, Transformers: Dark of the Moon made a fun uh, alien invasion movie. This alien invasion movie was really just that. It it had no substance, but it was really you're just watching the humans take out um, aliens, but at sea. The movie reminded me of Transformers: Pearl Harbor, Armageddon, Battle LA, and Independence Day all rolled up in one, and you get Battleship. It was still really Transformers at sea. You know what's really funny? I felt that. Peter Burke directing this movie was completely out of character. It felt like that he wanted to emulate Michael Bay, which kind of was odd to me. You think you're watching a Michael Bay movie that's less aggressive as a regular Michael Bay movie. It's a kind of toned down version of itself. I felt that it was completely out of character and I think Peter Burke should just stick to directing urban combat films, you know, like R-rated, you know, action, military action films like The Kingdom. That's what he should stick to. It felt like a rushed movie. There were so many things that were unexplained and the ending was abrupt too. The, the, the ending just like, oh, they killed the aliens, boom, now we're celebrating. That's it. I had to compare this movie with Battle LA just because uh, I felt it was the closest thing that was to it. So Battle LA, I give 6 out of 10. I'm giving this movie a 5.75 out of 10. Five because uh, I was entertained by it. It was an entertaining movie. I give it a 0.75 because it had good CG action, and I love the vis I, I love the visual aspect of it. But uh, it was not as good as Battle LA. So a 5.75 out of 10. Watch this movie. I recommend it if you like, you know, uh, like mindless and, uh, and and CG action fast. If you're into sci-fi action, that really is not a thinker movie. It really isn't. It's it's an enjoyable, uh, entertaining kind of a ride film. Oh yeah. By the way, before I forget, the movie doesn't take itself seriously. It's kind of cheesy, and I felt that. The reference to Battleship was really cheesy and unnecessary. It's just completely unnecessary. Also, also another thing that was unnecessary is what's up with, with the design of the aliens? They look like they're wearing Halo suits and the G.I. Joe Accelerator suits, but once you take off the mask, it's they just look weird. They look kind of dumb even. Like they're, they're they have these like goatees that are like 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 uh, pincers, you know, like a porcupine. But what is the point of that? Okay, it's not like he's gonna use his chin and chin you like, ugh. <laughs> you know what is the point of that? It feels like this movie is so totally rushed. Anyways, 5.75 out of 10. Watch it if you you know want to kill two hours and 12 minutes, and watch it if you're looking for some CG action because it's pretty good CG action. If you're looking for some mass destruction, that's what you get. Okay. Anyways, my name is Alex. My lame, <laughs> my lame, my lame name. My name is Alex Yu. Thanks for watching Rage and Run Review. I'll see you next time. Peace. Chicago, where when you really think about it, it's just a bunch of random action sequences thrown together and while it's a spectacle to 